It's been a big week for retail. Foot Locker rounding out the sector's earnings today with a huge beat. Its shares are surging as a result, but the results, though, have been very mixed when you take a look at some of the bigger names like Walmart and Target, who reported earlier. Let's talk to Jerry Storch. He's the CEO of Storch Advisors. Joining us now with the big takeaways. And Jerry, it certainly has been mixed. Walmart coming out beating expectations, although the expectations were much lower, so clearing a very low bar. Target, on the other hand, disappointing the street. How would you, what is your big takeaway from a number of the earnings that we got so far? Well, uh, I believe the, the reopening euphoria is is essentially over. And as we uh, you know exit August into the fall, uh, the, the hangover headache is beginning. And a combination of inflation and uh, consumers simply uh, running out of money with everything going on, and then the Fed tightening and slowing the economy is starting to have an impact. The narrative that I've seen since the retail sales report came out, for example, yesterday, I think it's just plain wrong. You know, that people say, well, you know, uh, they're not spending on gasoline, but they're spending on other things. So they're, the consumer is still spending. Well, when you look at what they're spending on, mostly it's food. It's food, food, and other necessities that they have to buy, which have seen uh, significant inflation. I think Walmart pointed out double-digit inflation in food, which drove their overall comp sales at Walmart. It's not that consumers are spending more; it's that they have to eat, you know. And that's what we're what we're seeing in the numbers. So the other increases were in, uh, you know, in home home improvement area. I think people do feel investing in their home, even in bad times, is a good deal. You know, good investment, smart thing to do. And then we saw growth on the internet. I think that's mostly because uh, Amazon added a new Prime Day into this uh, into this month, into July that wasn't there before. So when you really take a look at both Walmart and Target, you see a performance that uh, they would have been apoplectic over had they known they were going to have it a year ago. Uh, and uh, that that in one case beat low expectations, you point out, the other case even missed very low expectations. And Jerry, uh, Target and Walmart are often lopped together, and certainly they're both bellwethers, but how different are they in terms of getting a look at the, at the sector and the consumer, and which one is better prepared to weather a storm ahead? Hey, that, that's a great question. Uh, both chains were founded exactly 60 years ago in 1962. And uh, and ever since then, it's been been almost invariably true that during good times, Target does better because it has it's a little more of a luxe place, a little more discretionary apparel, things like that. And Walmart does better during tough times. And so what I would expect, again, is for Walmart to, to do better as we look to this period. They have much more developed grocery business. They have the largest grocer in the world. And I think that's going to give, let, allow them to shine as we get through here. The other thing that's lost, people compare these two companies and talk about is if they both laid an egg you know, in the first half of this year, but uh, Target laid a much bigger egg. I mean, the the uh, gross margin deterioration, for example, last quarter at Walmart was 106 basis points. Uh, the similar number at Target was 890 basis points, you know, almost nine times worse in gross margin deterioration. Target barely made money uh, in the in the quarter, whereas, uh, you know, Walmart sh- saw, you know, a, uh, you know, a small deterioration relatively speaking, in its operating income. So I think Walmart is in much better shape right now. As we get to the fall, if we don't see the consumer open up the pocketbook, it's going to be a tougher fall for Target than it is for Walmart. Well, certainly has been a tough environment here for retailers. It might improve looking forward, although certainly a rocky couple of months ahead. Jerry, what does all this mean for bankruptcy? Should we be expecting to be facing this industry, be facing a wave of bankruptcies come the new year? Sure. As you recall, Shana, before COVID, there were, was a steep acceleration in retail bankruptcies as companies that ha- were not adapting their strategies to the new era were failing at a, at a record pace. I think we're going to see a, conti- a, a resurgence or a return to that as we get to the holiday period and beyond, uh, particularly among apparel retailers, department stores, uh, and small mom and pop retailers who don't have the wherewithal uh, to weather the storm. So, so uh, you know, I'm not worried about Walmart and Target. You know, however well or poorly they may do uh, for themselves or their shareholders, not going out of business. But, but uh, there are a lot of companies who really haven't fixed their strategy, despite all the bragging that they were doing when things were good for a little while. When there's a dead cap bounce immediately after after the reopening, uh, you know, those companies are posting really. Uh, abominable results now. And I don't see anything that's going to make it any better. And some are going to run into credit problems. It's inevitable. And again, small mom and pops, one store on the main high street. We're going to see a lot of closings. And Jerry, speaking of new strategies, curious as a former CEO of Toys R Us, what you make of the Toys R Us comeback inside Macy's stores around the country. Do you believe this will work? And what does it mean for Macy's? 
Look, I applaud Macy's for trying new things. Uh, you know, it's not that new and that toys were in department stores for for centuries. Uh, and in fact, if you go back to uh, remember Miracle on uh, 34th Street, it was, it was a Santa at Macy's, right, that was selling toys. So uh, department stores uh, incorrectly, in retrospect, exited many categories, including toys, electronics, other categories where they felt they couldn't compete against big box retailers. But what it did is it made them very narrow apparel focused stores and kind of boring and and they started to age up, you know, in terms of their audience. Uh, something like, like a good toy offering is helpful to department stores. I would not blow this out of proportion. This is not your old toys or us. These are small spaces. Uh, you know, that they'll be lucky if they do, you know, $100 million in sales or something like that, as opposed to the billions of dollars in sales that Toys R Us did at its uh, at its peak. So this this is a, a licensing company that bought the rights of Toys R Us that licensed the name for Macy's to use it and to sell toys. The toy industry is not going to do somersaults to make sure Macy's has the hottest exclusives or anything like that. It's not going to be a big toy destination. Nice extra pickup item adds some flavor to Macy's that was missing. So I think it's good for good for them. Not much of a big story, really.